Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the climate crisis is a code red for humanity. And this assembly and governments around the world face a moment of truth. My name is Wei Tai, and I am a climate change activist. Fifteen years ago, I watched a documentary film about climate change that opened my eyes to the fact the planet was warming. My children were only six and nine years old at the time. It would be too late for them to solve this, so I decided I wanted to be part of the solution. Fast forward to 2021, when the United Nations warned that human-induced climate change was already causing weather and climate extremes in every region across the globe. The Earth's temperature has been rising. In fact, 20 of the 21 hottest years ever recorded by weather instruments have occurred since 2002. The hottest of all have been the last eight years. Time is running out for us to act. That's why scientists call the predicament we are in right now a code red for humanity. Is it too late for us to save the world and ourselves? Can we act in time to avert the worst consequences? I think we can. But to succeed, we must take urgent action every day over the next seven years if we're going to avoid triggering dangerous tipping points beyond which it will be hard to recover. And we also have to ask, who is responsible for all this global warming pollution and climate disruption, and who can help fix it? Here's an illustration showing the biggest climate polluters in the world the bigger the bubble, the bigger the carbon dioxide pollution. It turns out that just two countries account for about 45% of the world's global warming pollution, and that's the United States and China, followed by India and Russia. Now, American politicians, when they looked at this data, had said that since China's the biggest polluter, China needs to act first. China's leaders, on the other hand, pointed out that over the last 250 years, the United States has historically been the biggest carbon polluter in the world. Since carbon dioxide stays in the atmosphere for hundreds of years, shouldn't the U.S. be acting first and taking responsibility for its past carbon pollution? The world faced many years of gridlock on this issue of who should act first. Fortunately, a very special meeting took place in 2014 between President Barack Obama and President Xi Jinping. They agreed that the U.S. and China needed to strengthen bilateral coordination and cooperation on climate. That handshake paved the way for every country in the world to sign the Paris Agreement in 2015, which set an ambitious goal to limit global warming to no more than 2 degrees centigrade compared to pre-industrial times. Unfortunately, we are not on track to reach that goal. In fact, we're already at 1.1 degrees of warming. We have very little time left. And unfortunately, climate cooperation between the U.S. and China has come to a standstill. Humanity is truly facing a code red for urgent climate action. What can we do? We must speak up and let our leaders know we care and we want urgent action. The U.S. and China and the American and Chinese people, we have the best opportunity, in my view, to take action, to make a difference, and to show moral leadership to the rest of the world. We need to call for urgent action to keep fossil fuels in the ground. We want to accelerate the adoption of solar and wind and other renewable sources of energy. We want to live in a world without pollution. The technologies for these solutions already exist. We just need to move much more quickly through this transition. For example, China is making amazing progress by leading the world in transitioning to electric-powered public buses. And in the United States, I'm so proud that in August 2022, we finally passed the most aggressive action on climate and clean energy in American history. Let's switch gears and look at what we can do as individuals. On a personal level, I'm amazed by how much each of us can do to be part of the solution to climate change. I've put solar panels on the roof of my home, traded my gas cars for zero emission electric vehicles, and have even started to eat a more plant-based diet. It's easier to do than I thought. And that's how I look at the challenge of the climate crisis in a positive light. 
I think Chinese and Americans actually have a very special role in leading the world to solve the climate crisis. Our actions matter. But we've got to get going now. Please join me in getting involved. Use your voice to talk about climate. Use your vote to elect climate leaders. Use your choices and your wallet to change our world. Because our world depends on us. Chinese and Americans are the key to life on planet Earth.